Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we're going to discuss San Francisco 49ers versus Dallas Cowboys. Finally, playoff football. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Yes, Jim, I'm not kidding you. We can finally talk about playoff football because it's right around the corner. The San Francisco 49ers versus the Dallas Cowboys. We can stop speculating what the offense, the defense, what this team's going to look like in the first seed and the second seed, and the Dallas ends up on the third seed. We are in a very favorable matchup against the San Francisco 49ers, and they talk about rivalry games, but guess what? The teams have to be great in order for it to be a rivalry, and we have to be beating each other left and right to get to that championship, so that's not there anymore. The San Francisco 49ers versus the Dallas Cowboys rivalry that I grew up on, it's just not there because both teams haven't had the success. But now when you look at the Dallas Cowboys going into this season, it's just been different. So now to see them finally in a situation where it's win or go home, put up or shut up, it's I, I want to see what these guys can do because, yes, they are very young and they're the core of the team that we're going to have going forward. And I really love to see what they have been doing because they've been surprising me all season. And I know they've definitely been surprising you and, and your expectations have been raising and raising and raising the bar each time. And so when they underperform, man, the, the, the Dallas Cowboy fans get mad as hell. But guess what? Don't speculate anymore. Don't wonder what's going to happen. Watch the games. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Dallas Cowboys offense and defense and what they're going to have to do against the San Francisco 49ers to get to the next round. So let's do this. So as we focus in on the Dallas Cowboys offense, it, there's a, all the pieces that are in place for this offense to be the juggernaut that they can be. The only thing that's really missing is Michael Gallup, but you put in Cedric Wilson that honestly brings, I think, a little bit more than what Michael Gallup does. Now, don't get me wrong, Michael Gallup is an amazing receiver, but Cedric Wilson isn't the guy that's filling in for Michael Gallup. Cedric Wilson is his own receiver in his own right. The guy makes sideline catches. He does third and fourth down catches as well. He can throw the ball downfield. He's a gadget type of guy, and sometimes those gadget guys are exactly what you need in the playoffs when your offense may be staggering a little bit, and you need that little bit of offensive spark. So he's the type of guy that can really give that offense that spark, but will he disappear in the important games like he's done in the past? So that's the kind of the worrisome part. Will he step up in the playoffs, and will these other offensive weapons also? Because when you look at the rest of the offense, the offensive line is where our main concerns are always at. Of course, you got Tyron Smith coming back, but do you put him in the line? He's He's been rusty, and when you plug him back in, he showed in that past Arizona game that he looked really bad. So do you put a guy in there, even though he is the best that we have at times other than, of course, Zach Martin, but do you place him in and kind of make that gamble? That's going to be the question that, of this uh, coaching staff. What do you do in that spot? Now, with the other offensive weapons, when you have a guy like Cooper, you just got to target Cooper. He's going to get open. It doesn't matter if you throw two or three guys. As long as you target him, it gets the other guys going as well, too. And that's when Lamb is, puts up his things in the middle of the field and starts running around and starts making defenses go crazy. So as long as the offense can, can get going in a rhythm where the offensive line does its thing, you should see that running game get going. Yes, you have an injured Tony Pollard sitting there and you have Zeke Elliott just hit 1,000 yards, but... How much does it really mean when he's been injured all year? I mean, it means a lot. He's been injured all year, got a thousand yards, put all that together. Hopefully he can put it together with this playoff run and, and show us a Zeke Elliott. Honestly, I like how he was running this past couple of weeks. I mean, this past week, he was running with some purpose because he wanted to hit that thousand yards. So what happens when he wants to win that championship? Because honestly, he's been in the league long enough to know that these opportunities do not come around a lot. So when you have a defense that's playing well, you need to complement them and put points on the board. So I'm interested to see if this offense can get it going, can get the rhythm going, can get the locomotive, kind of like a train, man. It needs to get that sluggish kind of going or it just does not move until the second half when it really, honestly, sometimes the game is out of reach. So again, I don't see that happening because when it looks like this offense can get going, it's going to be up to San Francisco to catch up and stay with what our offense is doing. So when you look at the defense for the Dallas Cowboys, everything is in line to really make a push through these playoffs, but it's really going to depend on the health of the Dallas Cowboys. And this is something I've been preaching through the end of the year. So every single one of these pieces is an important piece. And you've seen, once you take a piece out like Parson this past time, it did affect it. And yes, the Dallas defense did step up still. And that's what the whole year has been about, is when a guy comes out, another guy steps up. 
but you really need your main stars to make this push through the playoffs because each one's going to make a play at some point in those games. So can you keep this defense on the field? That's going to be the biggest challenge for the Dallas Cowboys defense. Now, when you look at the San Francisco 49ers, there's a lot of weapons. When you look at their main one, Debo Samuel, he can run, he can catch. The guy does a lot of different things within this offense, and they allow him to because that's your main playmaker. So when you look at their quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, he's the type of quarterback that's going to go ahead and give you a turnover or two just in general. But when you can amplify that pressure that Dallas loves to bring, the secondary is going to have a lot more turnover opportunities and just going to be depending on whether they can take advantage of it or not. So when you look at the offense, hey, what is it going to do against this defense? Well, they're going to have to try to run the ball, which is San Francisco's biggest thing is they love running the ball. And you know this defense of ours has allowed the running game to kind of be established from teams. That has been their main weapon. So to jump on early and get them behind in the chains and get them behind in the sense of the score is going to make San Francisco one-dimensional and it's going to play right into the Dallas Cowboys' hands. But if Dallas' defense cannot stop the run and they are just running all day, then it's going right into San Francisco. And again, remember the, the whole who's going to win thing is only favored by three points. So San Francisco has a chance, just like any of these playoff teams, have a chance of beating the other team. But when you look at the matchup, Dallas definitely is favored. Now, can they get out of their own way? That's going to be the question. Can you get the pressure onto the quarterback to allow him to get those turnovers, to get you know long yardage on those third downs, get the offense off the field so we can get our offense on the field? That's going to be the biggest key on the defense. So let me give you the final thoughts of what I think is going to be the outcome of this game. So when we're looking at the final outcome for this Cowboys versus 49ers matchup, there's a lot of things in the storyline that has to come into play for either team. So when you look at the coaching staffs, oh, Kyle Shanahan, he knows Dan Quinn. Well, guess what? Dan Quinn's not the same defensive coordinator that he was in Seattle. So you can't really you know, play that as a big storyline because Dan Quinn is going to bring it to Kyle Shanahan, but Kyle Shanahan is going to do his own thing as well, too. He's not an idiot. When you look at the offensive line for us, will they be able to hold up? Will they not commit all those penalties and put our offensive back? Where our running game really needs to establish dominance throughout this playoff and show and dictate the kind of time and tempo that we need to run. This defense that has been producing turnovers all year, will they continue that in the playoffs when it really, really matters? With the pressure needs to get to the quarterback and you have three to five guys there that can and will put pressure on that quarterback. But with the quick passes, that's the way they counter it. So what will San Francisco do to counter that? How will they you know, implement Debo Samuel into their offense? Well, they'll continue it because they don't really like to sugarcoat all that stuff. I think we can win by 10 points, but will i be surprised if dallas all of a sudden runs away with it no will i be surprised if san francisco can win with it no because this is playoff football every single team can win and every single team got here for a reason so you know we can't just roll over and think that this is going to be an easy victory but from what i hear there's a lot of people scared a lot of people in the media that are not picking the cowboys that's fine you know dallas being the underdog has always been the better thing it's when they get that favoritism where oh i think they are the team to be that's when San Francisco has the more of an opportunity to beat us because that's when Dallas seems to have a big head about themselves. But that's not what's happening right now. This is a different year. This is a different team. So I'm interested to see what this different team does in the playoffs. So again, thank you for subscribing. I'm Primetime Phil. I love all the support. This has been a hell of a season. Let's get this playoff push going. And I really want my first season as a YouTuber to definitely be a Super Bowl year. That would be amazing. So thank you for subscribing. Make sure you hit that like button on that way out. But don't forget to always ring that bell.